my God. <laughs> this, is, this is scary, frightening. Joe DeVille has lived on Grand Bahama for more than 40 years, and he's never seen the mangrove coast like this. This whole area was nothing but beach, and then you had to walk out about five or 600 feet, actually, to get into swimmable water. That's how shallow it was. After Dorian now, Dorian has reclaimed all of this. Joe believes that the hurricane shifted the ocean floor, bringing the sea to unprecedented levels. And he says it's here to stay. We are a nation of 100,000 square miles of ocean. That is going to increase um, dramatically, exponentially, over the next 25 or 30 years, to the extent that only 20% of our hard ground in the Bahamas will be left. And that's not hard to imagine as you drive east to the worst affected areas. Acre upon acre of destroyed pine trees, brown and broken, as if ravaged by drought, not storm. But perhaps Dorian's biggest assault on the environment is this oil spill. Thousands of gallons of spilled crude oil burst from tanks at the height of the storm. This is being described as a catastrophic disaster for the island. The fear is that it's already destroying what's left of the pine forest and that it's contaminating the water table below, which is the main source of water for the island. Some say what Dorian did here is terrible, but unavoidable. You know, if there's ever a catalyst for change, it's something like this, because we really need to imagine or reimagine how we work. Rupert Hayward runs the privately funded Freeport municipality. He's trying to build a more climate resistant island. We're asking the world to, to stop producing CO2. We need to take a lead on that too. So we need to decarbonise our economy. We need to move to electric vehicles, to golf carts. We need to develop in a way that you use bikes and walking rather than the automobile. But convincing the community here to change may take time. People are desperate to pick up where they left off. But with a rapidly changing climate, the people of Grand Bahama are vulnerable to more destruction. And adapting to a different way of living and building may be the only option they have. Sally Ihan, TRT World, Grand Bahama.